Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Eunice. If you're new here, I'm so excited for today's video because we finally completed the home office room makeover. I'm sitting in it right now and it feels so good to finally have a dedicated space where we can get work done in and also do some creative projects in. We did some DIY for this room, thrifted some amazing items, and I really challenged myself to try some new things for this project. So stay tuned for all of that. So the the best part was that we got to start on a complete blank page and when we first moved in here in January we were trying to figure out which room we wanted the home office room to be and we ended up deciding to choose this room because this is not a very private room it's actually near the entrance by the kitchen and it's also connected to the living room via the balcony because we wanted anyone who's living here or visiting to be able to utilize this room, we chose it. And so the goal was to make over this space so that it feels very welcoming and collaborative. Since the pandemic hit, we've all been working from home and it was important for us to have a space where we can really focus and be productive in. So before starting this project, we thought about our three must-haves for this room and we ended up on one, the room had to have desks and chairs that we can work on, of course. Two, the room had to be able to fit at least four people and have it be a collaborative space. So our vision was that on the weekends we can even have friends over and play board games and that I also had additional table space to be able to do some DIY projects on. And lastly, the third one was that the room had to have stylish backdrops for filming. This was important for me because I wanted a variety of options to be able to film these talking heads in front of. Look-wise, I really wanted this space to feel very calm but also creative and inspiring so I imagined lots of colors and textures. So here's the layout of the room. Months ago, we knew that we wanted bookshelves on the left side of the room when you walk in. So we went ahead and installed those. These are the Billy bookcases from Ikea and I love how they're narrow and tall. We also purchased the add-on shelves and added them on top. So it makes them really tall and almost touch the ceiling, which helps make the bookcases look really built in. These shelves are also removable, which is a huge plus. So you can kind of like play around with the size of the units and add things that are more vertical like plants and I made an entire video of how I decorated these bookshelves that I will link right here. In that video, I shared 10 decor tips on how you can style your bookshelf and how we were able to achieve this wall. On the other wall, I was inspired by this symmetrical two desks kind of facing the wall uh, look that I was seeing on Pinterest and I decided to go with that. And then we also ended up turning that wall into a board and batten accent wall. We painted it with this light green and it turned out beautifully. I love the softness of the green and it really helped bring that wall closer to the other side because this room is quite wide and the green wall really just helped shorten the space. Then for the longest time, I was trying to figure out what to do with that empty space between the bookshelves and the desk. With everything else so flat up against the wall, the room just felt very divided. And so I decided to get a round table that can seat up to four chairs. And this was going to help add some movement and flow throughout the room. And lastly, I knew that we need some curtains for the balcony door, some wall art, plants of course, and some lighting. Oh, and a cabinet by the bookshelves. So we first brought in these two dark brown desks and I really challenged myself to avoid doing the whole all white look this time and I'm so happy that I went with these desks because they add a really nice contrast against that board and batten green wall and they also help add some maturity and weight to that side of the room. Then before adding all of our stuff on the desk, we installed in these trays beneath the desk that I got from Amazon to organize our cables. Here are the two tray organizers that I got. They came in a set of two and I'm going to add each one under each desk. So all I'm going to have to do is just screw the tray on using a screwdriver and the nails that it provided me. And there are actually four ways that you can do this. I'm going to go with this one just so that I don't have to have the cables go through the tray and they can just kind of sit here and the cable can come out and go onto the outlet. So this is how Jason organized his wires. He 
has an extension cord going from the outlet to the tray and he just put that extension cord right there as you can see i don't have that many wires but i do really like this tray for putting the wires through it and wrapping it around so that they're not just hanging all over the place and then i also put my camera charger right there on the tray so i think this tray is also great for just kind of holding those external chargers that you may have we also got these wide mouse pads off Amazon and I love the color of them. They look sleek, they have like that leather look and they almost blend in with the table which I like because I don't want them standing out too much. And most importantly, they help protect the desk. table lamps i love the shape of them so much so i found these at a storage unit sale which was such an interesting experience so i found them on marketplace and it ended up being sold by this guy who used to run a furniture store and he wanted us to meet up at his storage unit where he had a bunch of other stuff so it was really fun we ended up scoring these lamps for just $25 each and they came with two light bulbs inside them. So what I like about these lamps is that they have two brightness options. So you can basically turn on one or both of the bulbs and I love how the light just shines downwards and has a really nice cast and it really looks great when they're both on symmetrically against that wall. Then we finished our desk area with these chairs. I forget the name of them, so I will make sure to link it in the description box below. My criteria for chairs was aesthetic over ergonometrics. Ergonometrics? Is that a word? Whereas my fiance's was the opposite. I just knew that I did not want ugly, bulky office chairs. So we found one that met both of our criteria and these chairs were definitely an investment. We reasoned splurging on them by the fact that we're literally working for eight hours a day. And with remote work happening, Happening for at least another year for my fiance and the end of the pandemic being uncertain it was really important that we were able to work comfortably at home and after using them i think it was definitely a worthwhile purchase although they're a little tall for me i'm five foot two and my legs kind of dangle so if you're my height and you're interested in these chairs then i highly recommend getting a foot rest I love a good gallery wall and we did one for this room in between the balcony door and the accent wall. I was initially just going to do one art print right there just to like help move the eye up but I went to the thrift store and I found a lot of cute frames and I just knew instantly it had to be a gallery wall. So I saw this giant Walker Evans photo there and I knew that that had to be on the bottom and that this gallery wall was going to go from the floor all the way up to the ceiling. I also wanted to add some pink tones into this gallery wall because pink complements really nicely with green and also to tie the warmer tones that are happening in the room but i did not have any pink artwork so here's a little diy trick for you if you're wanting to fill a frame up but don't have any artwork you can use fabric so i got this piece of pink fabric from the thrift store it's actually a pillow cover and it was like less than a dollar and i basically stapled it onto the frame board and i put the glass back on and voila that was it i had myself a pink artwork and it was so easy Depending on the type of fabric you use, you can also use this technique to add some texture in the wall like if you use a knitted sweater or even some fabric with some tassels or something like that. I used some craft paper to determine the layout of this gallery wall and to kind of play around with where I wanted the things to be. And if you want more tips on how to hang a gallery wall, I made an entire video before as a part of my Behind the Sofa series, which I cover how to hang a gallery wall, how I made some DIY modern artwork. So I will definitely link that here and in the description box below. I'm so happy with how this gallery wall turned out. It just hit all of the right spots for me. The black frames just help add some contrast. The brown frames throughout help add some texture. And I love the Walker Evans photo just sitting on the floor, making the whole gallery wall look like it was effortlessly done. To top this section off, I added this snake plant in a pink pot, which ended up tying really well with that pink artwork.
So as I mentioned before, the bookshelves have been done for quite some time now. It is a beautiful wall, but not the most functional. So we knew that we wanted to replace the stuff on the bottom row with some storage bins. But the two times we went to Ikea, they were always sold out of the white bins that we wanted. So I ended up going with these baskets from Target. And I'm actually glad that I ended up switching to a dark brown color because these baskets really help tie the bookshelf wall side of the room with the other accent wall side of the room because of the dark brown desks. And these baskets don't fit perfectly. They're actually a little too wide. But what I ended up doing was rotating them around. And what we ended up doing was organizing things like our extra notebooks book some cables like chargers and I also used one basket to put a lot of my film gear in I found this used round white table off marketplace and I was so happy because it was in such great condition and I haggled it down by like $25 oops and for the chairs I placed these wishbone chairs always wanted wishbone chairs and we finally have some in our office room and I think they go really well with the round table these chairs also help add some different wood tones to the space. I read a tip that you want to mix and match different tones of wood and browns because this really helps make the space feel more lively and not fall flat. Then to make this space feel like its own separate area, I added a DIY pendant light. I have always wanted to try this project and we finally had a good reason to do it. And the best part is that I got this shade for $3 at the Salvation Army store and it was like literally in the center of the home section just screaming my name and I knew it was the one. So for this DIY pendant light, I used battery operated puck lights and to hang them inside the shade, I basically created little hammocks for them. What I did was cut a square piece of fabric and then draw a circle around the puck lights. Cut that circle out so that the lights can shine through. And then I just got each corner of that square fabric and kind of put it together like a little dumpling, added a hole in it and tied a string through it. And then I just kind of hung that and tied that string onto the top part of the shade. I did that for both puck lights and it actually turned out really well. I mean, I'm looking at it right now and they're stable. And then to hang the actual pendant light up, we got a ceiling hook that has a drywall anchor on it and we just hooked that to the ceiling and then got a thicker cotton rope and, and tied a huge knot so that it doesn't go through that top ring of the shade and so that it just kind of hooks on and then we tied that rope to the ceiling hook. I also added a rug to this area so that it really secures this kind of dedicated space and so that the table and chairs don't look like they're floating. I was a little worried that the rug wouldn't work out because it's got these rainbow rings. So I figured it would either look just right or a little kiddish, but I'm so glad that in person, the colors on this rug are actually very muted and mature and have a very natural tone to it. So it really helps tie all of the greens, pinks, and warm tones that are happening throughout the room together. And the rug adds a really nice texture. Then to finish this section off, I organized all of our markers and pens into this glass vase that I got at the thrift store. And I also made a little arrangement with these beautiful faux flowers that I got off Michaels. I love how they're like rounded at the ends and just kind of like poke outwards. And I put them in this really cute beaded vase that I got at the thrift shop as well. Moving on to the left side of the bookshelves, we got this vintage or vintage file cabinet from this gigantic thrift store called Savers. If you're from the Bay Area, I highly recommend checking it out. We discovered it for the first time and it is huge. They have everything. At first, I was going to paint the cabinet black, but I actually ended up really liking the warm stain that it already has because it matches really well with the pendant light and the wooden chairs. And I learned a tip for when you're mixing different tones of wood and browns, you want to represent each of them at least twice. So in our case, the dark brown is represented by the desks and the brown baskets in our bookshelves, whereas this warmer tone is represented by the file cabinet, the chairs, and the pendant light. 
and doing this allows both tones of wood to live together without having them clash. Then I started looking for some art prints to hang up on that blank space above the cabinet. So I was digging through our closet trying to find if we had any art prints or frames and I found these. These are metal grids. I've had these for forever. I think these are one of my earlier purchases when I first moved here to San Francisco. These are from Daiso and I think these would look so great here. Just have it up against the wall and have little clothespins on them so that you can hang up little memos, reminders, or even like little postcards and quotes and things like that. At this point, we were almost finished, but that right side of the accent wall was missing something. So what I did was find this wicker table off Marketplace and it really helps add some texture to this side of the room. And to fill up that table, I added some books below it, this plant and this little frame that you may have seen in a couple of my previous videos. And last but not least, this may have been one of my favorite parts about this makeover. The accent wall was looking bare, so I found this metal decor piece off Amazon to hang up. So I got these metal words to stick onto that wall and it came with eight words. It says, do what you love and love what you do. One thing I'm a little concerned about is the adherence of these little stick-ons. I read some reviews that they don't stick that well, so we'll have to see how that works. I'm only going to be putting four of the words up because I just want it super simple, just like two lines max in the center. I really like the black. I think it matches well with the black accents in the room. It's gonna look really clean because they do each have their own little stick on knob. I love how this looks. Oh, and I forgot to mention in the beginning because this actually happened way before a lot of the stuff in this room. We got these white curtains for the balcony doors to really help brighten and mute that wall out so that the accent wall can really pop. Are you ready to see the final reveal? Because I am! So even though it was a complete blank space with just the bookshelves before, let's just reminisce back. The room was bare, it was empty, there was no place to work. And here is what it looks like now. so happy with how this turned out and I'm actually really surprised at all of the styles that we were able to mix in. We ended up having a bit of boho, a little bit of farmhouse, some Scandinavian, and we have a good amount of vintage pieces and I really love how it ended up reflecting our personality and style or more so mine. <laughs> Most importantly, we were able to check off all three of our must Haves. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this makeover. I will make sure to add all of the products that I mentioned in this video in the description box below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to this channel to see more. When you do, make sure to hit that bell next to it so that you're notified when I upload future videos. I will be releasing several for the holiday season so stay tuned for that. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram as well to keep up with those projects. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.